Blog Talk Radio. Fuck. The motherfucking saga continues. Continue. Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, world? It's badass sucking like I usually do. And you better turn it up, bust some speakers out, cause we off the motherfucking cup. You dig how we do it? Dog Pound Gangsters 2000 and beyond. What's up with it, John? Man, don't change that sound. This should play a part of the legendary cocaine. And you tuned in live to Off the Cup Radio. Better not touch that down. Wigglin'. Yeah, yeah, this is Cassidy, the hustler. And right now, you listening to the guillotine. Show them the respect they deserve, man. Off the cut radio, man. Y'all already know how they doing it, man. I need y'all to stay tuned. They've been doing it for years. So show them the respect they deserve. And you heard it out of bars, mom. Easy. Keep it moving like this. Yo, this your boy Rampage. You're not rocking with the best. With Off the Cup radio. Classic. History. Fix your face to all you haters. We off the cup, baby. What's up, everybody? This your girl, Bonnie Dollars, the queen of trap, representing Crenshaw. And you are now tuned in with Off the Cuff Radio. What's up? What's up, y'all? This is Miss Irresistible, giving a shout out to the live show on Friday nights, Off the Cuff Radio. And I'm live from the 704. Make sure y'all tune in for the blazing hot music.
of 15 years, how the dog and he Twenty years he built me. Mr. Bolt Mr. Bolt and Mr. Bolt and Exclusive episode going down this morning, sponsored by Buddy Boy Entertainment, Fleetwood and the Cotton Pickers, Da Vinci Clothing, Jesse's Boutique, Core Financial, and we got T Max with the facts on the line. What's good, my man? Man, top of the morning to you, man, and top of the morning to our audience. K, I'm um, shout out to our co-host and spirit, a lot of fan man, ladies and chiller. This episode right here is undoubtedly going to go down as one of our most impactful, insightful, and outright exciting. It's been a year in the making, but as they say, good things come to those who wait. This guest we have on our show this morning, World Renowned does not do enough justice in terms of the titles this woman has. This woman is tremendously talented in all aspects of music, activism, being a dope person. She is fearless, and we want to come with her on her journey because she is more than enough in terms of her gifts and her limitless benevolence and generosity to the universe. Um. We could spend two hours alone just talking about all of her awards, accolades, and achievements and accomplishments, and not in that order. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, representing Brooklyn, New York, LaGuardia School of Arts alumni, the marvelous, the magnificent, the mighty woman herself, Maya Azizana. Hey, girl. (laughs) What's going on? Hey, what's up with an introduction like that? I mean, wow. <laughs> Can I take you everywhere? Yeah, I'm you, what, what did I tell you, man? You wanted to be the, the poor <laughs> Michael Buffer or something. <laughs> I mean, can you fit inside of a, a rolly bag? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my yeah, you gotta no. be old. You got to be our Michael Buffer. I would love to. Oh. And by the way, so what's up, T-Mag? What's up, King Eric? Uh, it has been a year in the making, but very interesting. You know, sometimes 
it's just the timing is perfect, you know, because there's a lot of things going on right now that I want to talk to you guys about and your audience about. So, actually, it's perfect timing. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Um, Maya, we have been acquainted for some years, you know, through IG and Facebook. Um, your music is just something ethereal. It is the essence of soul. It is the epitome of expression. Um, and I got on to you a little late um, from when you initially started, but the first song I heard from you was Fearless. And I was instantly a fan after that. I mean, and of course, come with me. Shout to Trigo Fair, who did a production on that. Um, and I was like, who is this girl? <laughs> and where can I find her stuff at? Because, I mean, oh, my God. I mean, you just blew me away from the first listen, and I've been a fan ever since. Um, I mean, you That's indeed a, have a beautiful it. compliment. Yes. Thank you very much. I mean, it's important to me that, you know, the music that I create actually touches people, actually connects, you know. So when you say that you heard just one song or two songs and and it it grabbed you and it spoke to you, that's like the biggest kind of compliment because you didn't turn to me because of some kind of hype. You turned because the something inside of the you know the the music the message the voice like you know connect it with you and that's that's my goal so like it's very um encouraging and affirming um because I'm an indie artist you know it didn't reach you because Sony was hyping it or Universal was hyping it or you know it got came to you because on some kind of indie you know, mix up, you, you ended up finding it. And, and that's just, um, sometimes, you know, I, as an indie artist need those, you know, moments when people tell me, yeah, it's actually reaching us, you know, and, and that's, that's important to me. Yeah. It's um, just a testament of good music. That it I is. I believe it. I uh, believe in it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing about it, and I can't prop King enough for this, you know, for bringing me on five years ago, him and the team, because this is the vision he had when he started off the Cuff Radio. Um, this is what we do. This show is about not only the legends, which are many that we've had on the show, but incredible indie artists such as yourself who we want to take not a spectator seat, but an active participant role in getting your work out there and letting our listeners and letting our world know at large about who you are. Because reading through, um, I mean, my God, I mean, reading through your, your credentials, it's like a who's who of just awesomeness. I mean, from who you worked with, we're going to get into that today. Um, I mean, and and one thing you said, Maya, about the indie trail, because it, it, it is such a profound and touching sentiment because we understand. Like you said, when you don't have a big machine behind you, you're relying on casual listeners in terms of people on just YouTube, the blogs, uh, magazines, any type of electronic or print literature to – you know, really dig deep, um, just like what we do with our show. You know, we don't have a big machine behind us, but as I've said before, we will put our show up against anybody, you know, because yep. just because you don't have that big media conglomerate doesn't mean you're a chump, but it makes you a champion for what you, you know, achieve in terms of the, you know, what it takes, the dedication. Um mm-hmm. I mean, so we all understand. We all have a shared yep. struggle, but we also have a collect effort of how we make each other great. Um, I guess we get back I'm to the genesis it. of it. Like, yes, I guess we get back to the genesis like Nas on 1994 Illmatic. Tell us how you started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
funny. I, you, you just made me think of Pete Rock because I, I sent Pete Rock a message yesterday and I said, Pete, you've known me since the beginning, like since I was re- before I was Maya Azucena. I mean, I've always been Maya Azucena, the name on my birth certificate. But I mean, before anyone knew who I was. <laughs> and I was like, Pete, can yeah. you please just like, let people know about my new project because you're one of the people who really knows how far I've come, you know. Um, so mm-hmm. when you mentioned Illmatic and Nas, I, I thought of Pete. Um, I mean, there's more than one Inception story. You know, in our lives, you know, we go through um, kind of stages and, and you graduate and then you start into a new stage. So as a child growing up in Flatbush, Brooklyn, as you mentioned, born and raised Flatbush, um, you know, Over I Red always... Cafe too. We got to shout out Red. oh man I mean grew up in a Caribbean neighborhood black Caribbean neighborhood um raised I'm I'm mixed heritage so my father is white American Scottish Irish English and my mother Mm -hmm. is black American with Jamaican and Cherokee in her roots um and when my parents divorced you know I, I lived most of the time with my mom in the whole time in Brooklyn, Flatbush. And so I was mm-hmm. surrounded by all the the music, you know, when you take a dollar van, if anyone knows what a dollar van is, it's a hmm, underground black market ride that you can get when you don't want to wait for the bus. And usually driven by a Caribbean or a Jamaican, uh, somebody from an island, and you hear inside the dollar van all of the new joints coming out of the islands before they're on the radio. Um, you know, so I was surrounded by this and as a child, you know, I just always loved to sing. So this wasn't something that a person like made me do, or I wasn't trying to follow in the footsteps of of, uh, an adult member of my family. I just had it inside of me. But then the, the later inception story is, you know, when I realized you're no longer a kid, you're thinking about how do I take this thing that I love and turn it into a career. Um, right, right. And <clears throat> many years later, I was just very passionate. I'm still very passionate, but I was very passionate but unsure of where to put all that energy and all of these things that I wanted to say, because I wanted to not just sing other people's songs. I really wanted to write my own songs and make my own statement in the world. And many years ago, Jeru the Damager uh, talked to me backstage at a New York City event. It used to be a popular Tuesday night event. Like 12.30 in the morning is like when you had to show up, and that was like the dopest event in New York at the time. Mm-hmm. And Jeru was like, yo, just be independent. Just be independent. Go for it. Don't you, you know, don't hold back. Be an independent artist. Because we start out in the beginning, like, hoping to be discovered, hoping that somebody will come along and recognize our value, that someone will see our talent and give us a chance. But, like, Jeru was basically like, give yourself the chance. You know, if you treat. And I, and I took what he said to my heart. I thought about it. I was like, if I take what I want to do and treat it like a business and I work at it all day long like uh, people go to work, then it's going to have results. And I don't need to wait for someone to give me permission or tell me I'm good enough to do that. If I go to work every day, there will be results. So I started like putting all of that extra energy I had into like, how do I turn this into a career instead of waiting for someone else to put me on? And, you know, it's, it's walked me to where I am now internationally traveled artists, collaborating with all kinds of incredible people. um, Because, it's basically an entrepreneur's mindset. You can be an entrepreneur. You know, you don't have to be an employee in your life. You can be the the business owner of your career. So you guys started your radio show with the same spirit. And that's why you're here. You know, I'm, it's the same for me. 
Um, one, yeah, one thing it's about also it, about like, studying. Yeah, it's also about studying your craftsmanship too. Like even if you have a, have a passion of doing it, it's also you know learning from the greats. Like who were some of your inspirations? There's always some levels, right, to my to to one's inspirations, but to my inspirations. I mean, when I think about being a singer, um, some of my main inspirations are um, like old school, like Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson is a gospel singer who was one of Aretha Franklin's main inspirations. Um, And Ella Fitzgerald, um, her technique and the joy in her voice when she sings. Um, Mahalia, because she sang in a way like she never held back she never sounded like she was tentative about anything. She, when she opened her mouth, it was like, I'm praising God right now with my voice. And if you're not with it, you know, uh, see you later. Cause I'm not going to hold back for anybody. And I, and I often think about her and have thought about her when I'm in a situation where I feel a little intimidated maybe, or the circumstances aren't great. And I'm like, nope, I'm not holding back. I'm going to give it my all. Somebody here needs this. And it's like treating my voice like a service instead of like uh, just entertainment, you know? Um, um, yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, don't forget your question. But when you switch <laughs> to like genres, I, I really, um, and I know these are all throwbacks. There are amazing artists like current com- current artists that are absolutely dope that inspire me, but I really like pull from the roots and the ancestors, you know? Um, When I think about like what Stevie Wonder and Prince did that inspired me, it's this genre bending that they did. You know, Mm. they didn't like Stevie Wonder could be like, I'm a, I'm a do a symphony record right now (laughs) out of nowhere. And then just do something with a reggae tins on it. And then, then do funk, then do something where he's singing in Spanish. I mean, he just didn't limit himself. And Prince was the same. He's like, I'm going to do a pop record. And then all of a sudden there's a rock guitar solo in the middle of it. And then there was a gospel song. Then there was a, you know, and that really inspires me because in this industry, you are being hit on the head. Like you need to fit into one of these, boxes in order for us to work with you and I'm like yeah but well look at these artists like they didn't have to fit inside of a box you know so whenever somebody's yeah. telling you no you can't I'm looking at like well you're saying no you can't but yes I can you know and these things they've given me permission and that is a self-affirmation of talent. Uh, Maya, we want to back up a little bit because when you talk about Mahalia Jackson, she is widely considered the greatest gospel singer ever. And, of course, you mentioned Ella Fitzgerald, which is near and dear to my heart, being from Virginia. Shout out Newport News, Hampton area. Where yeah, she's Newport from. News. You know, um, you know, this is – they are the epitome in terms of what it meant of expression and – you know, the panache, the way that they delivered it, the passion, they felt it. When you speak on Stevie Wonder, of course, when you speak on how he had his Spanish, of course, you know, what he, you know, started on, you know, with a, you know, where you don't have to worry about a thing, you know, but I mean, Stevie's ear for music from when he did fingertips at 12 years old at the Apollo on the harmonica, I believe that was in 19 or late 1950s, I believe, uh, when Ooh. he made his debut. Um, and then of course his, his sense of melody, the, 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 the unique and atypical arrangements that he would use. I mean, of course, you know, living for the city, the way that he recorded mm. that interlude where, you know, he has that social commentary going on with it. Yep, yes. And how he fit that in, I mean, the, and, and Prince, I mean, God rest his 
soul, Prince Rogers Nelson. I mean, the man was just a walking machine. Yes, I'm going to shamelessly plug my brother's uh, article that he did on uh, Prince. Uh, King, you need to send Maya that, um, that joint you did about him because it really broke down everything you said, Maya, in terms of the industry, about being independent, which he ultimately became, um, but how – because this all ties into back what you said about J. Rue, because when Prince got into his situation years ago, many years back, about you, you know what was happening with Warner Brothers where they owned his name, and he had to fight for all those years to get literally his name back. Now, fortunately, he was able to still work because, you know, he, he was still able to work because he, he came up with the, the, the name, the artist he formed, it's known as Prince, and then they had to sign. And he was still a self-contained uh, machine. So he could do all. He didn't need a label. He was already established by then where he could still do everything. Um, right. And so and, and, that's the thing about him. Yeah, like he, he had his following – already established mm-hmm. and then when he broke off to be independent um his following of course you know grew and, and stayed with him um right where i differ is like i started from this grassroots place and i'm i've been doing it from the ground you know up i didn't have a blow up uh, of single yet or anything like that puts me yet in the eye on that um that to that degree so I'm like kind of just I'm I think of myself like you know in the Wizard of Oz or in the Wiz you know when they're on the yellow brick road and Dorothy is just picking up you know people along the road and then by the end she has her crew and like my journey is like that I I connect with people as I go who I have genuine you know you know sense of connection with and they just join my journey and then we all end up on the yellow brick road. <laughs> That's how I see it. <laughs> I'm on the yellow brick road. <laughs> Perfect segue. Perfect segue, Maya, because we're going to talk about one of our fav- one of our most favorite MCs ever, whom you sang on his album. Shout out to QB's very own Core Mega. Tell us how that happened. So, you know, uh, it's a good thing that this is not video because you guys would see me Googling myself. <laughs> I kid, I kid, but I, but I don't kid. Sometimes I'm like, yo, I did so many things. Like, how did these, like, how did I get to this person? So I, I was tracing it. This is how it happened. General Steele from Bucktown. I mean, boot, from boot camp click, right? Smith and but, Wesson, you know. Smith and Wesson, because we interview him too. Smith and yeah. Wesson, okay, Smith and Wesson, General Steel. So somehow, a long, long, long time ago, I was invited to be on this Tupac tribute called okay. The Rose Volume 2. And um, I wrote and sang the hook, and I just looked it up. It's so hard to find this thing. And then when you find the track listing, you don't even see that it's my name actually, but I wrote the hook and I sang on this Tupac tribute called the Rose volume two. And the, and the song is where there's a will, there's a way, eh, eh. where there's a will, where there's a will, there's a way. Eh, eh. And I met steel and his whole crew. And, um, steel, I think was the one that introduced me to Cormega or maybe Cormega got hip to me through steel. And uh, Cormega was making a benefit song for Haiti that features Lil Fame from MOP, Sick, and Red Man, and General Steel. So my first collaboration with Cormega was a song named I Made a Difference. And it was 100% of the proceeds went to benefit Haiti after the turmoil that they experienced. And it featured General Steele, Lil Fame from MOP, Stick and Red Man. And after Cormega and I met through that, you know, collaborated because he loved my message, not just my voice. He invited me on like four other songs. Um, but the one that we did with Large Professor is called 
Till I Rise or Rise. That was also the philosophy in 2014. Yep. And I wrote that. And I have You know, recorded. (laughs) You have the, did you get the vinyl? He had a beautiful vinyl series. Um, no. Uh, and we always do spontaneous trivia, uh, for letting people know because you and me talked a lot and, oh God, we got so much to get into, but this is all the cuff. So we do it like just on the spot, on the fly. Um, yeah, because I actually, I, I bought, cause I'm, I've been a huge core mega fan for years. So I bought Mega Philosophy uh, at a local record store, Shallow DJs, Music and Video, Tidewater Drive, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, Pat and Larry. They've been there for over 45 years. Um, so I got it. Um, that record is like, it was in limited release. You go on eBay, it's it's expensive. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. It's a CD and vinyl. Uh, and cassette, if you can find all three uh, versions of it. Um, but I have the CD version. Um, I'm I'm doing some mold digging right now to get that vinyl, that blue vinyl. But yeah, I yeah, there's it. a blue and one. I think he even had a red one, but I can't remember if the, the red one was instrumentals. Was the, instrumentals. Yeah, the red one, yeah. yes, it was the instrumental album. Yes, ma'am, it was the instrumental. Yes. Uh, yeah, and so, like, Cormega, like, you know, he's a real dude. You know, I, I really respect him. Um, and it's, you know, there's a saying, real recognize, real, like, like it's interesting why I've collaborated with so many independent hip-hop artists. It's like, because the hip-hop artists that want to um, kind of have uh, a sense of substance in, you know, in their songs, or, or they connect with my messaging, even though my my music is not hip hop directly. Um, and I would write original hooks. I do write original like hooks and join as a feature on their project. So Cormega was just like, yo, I love like your message. I love where you're coming from. And, and that's, you know, kind of why we did, I made a difference first. And then from there it became rise and The other two, I think he didn't release them. He did a live album, kind of live uh, production. It was the Revelations. It was was the band. It was the band with the Revelations because I have that album too, and that's even rarer. Okay, uh, because I'm on two two songs on there, but I don't. I feel like I didn't even get it. You heard it before? (laughs) Yeah, I have. Yeah, I I need to find it. Yeah, it's yeah that that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk after the show because that stuff is like, you got to go on eBay to, like, find a lot of that because what Mega did, oh, God, I mean, the, the, the trivia and the history we have here is just phenomenal, and we're only, like, a little over 30 minutes in. Oh, my God. Um, okay, so because Mega, as you say, Maya, he was also another one. For those that know the story about what he went through with Def Jam, of course, being part of the firm, you know, uh no need to rehash the issues that him and Nas had, especially now that they're friends again. But uh, he went through a lot of stuff in terms of um, trying to, you know, when that deal fell through, he started Legal Hustle Records. This was in 2001, of which he would drop the realness in that fall. And, of course, the next year he would drop the true meaning. Um, pretty much over the years, what he would do is he basically took it into his own hands in terms of, you know, when he, you know, and of course he dropped the testament, which once again, y'all, this is why physical is important. We're going to get into that conversation on this show because the testament was originally released in 1997. Uh, well, it was originally recorded in 1997, but he didn't get the rights to the album until later. He talks about this in an issue of, uh, I believe, Source of Double XL magazine. Uh, where he said, because this is why y'all have to know y'all business, um, the record, the music, even if it's dope, would depreciate in value because of the time it's recorded in. And they were still, he said, trying to charge him around 150000 for the masters for it. Um, he eventually got it. Um, the version that was released in 2004, The Testament, which I have too, that's not the original because I have the original, original album. Shout out to one of my aces on the block who hit me with it years ago. But, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the bootleg, but I have it, the original version. But, I mean, wow. yeah, so all of you understand. Yeah, all 
sure you understand the importance of it in terms of what it means, you know, doing this from an independent scale. And, I mean, of course, he dropped, you know, um, you know, uh, what was it, the Who Am I DVD? That was in 2007. Um, he dropped the Legal Hustle uh, instrumental some years back. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fanboy because I have literally everything that he's done. And this guy be having <laughs> all the vinyl cute. and magazines and all that. Yeah. Nah, I he's good. You know what? He's good people. Like, he's one of those people that, like, when I think about it as an artist who has, like, a through and through artist and is human. And when you think about it, I'm like, that's the person that's worthy of that, you know, of that um, respect. So, you know, like, big ups to Cormega. Um, you know, I, all right, we have so many things we can share, and it's taken us a year to finally talk. But where do we – I want to make sure we don't lose any of the important, like, you know, things we must yeah, discuss yeah, things well, that we want yeah, to – Yeah, another one I – yeah, I want to shoot this to you here because, you know, when we was doing our research, we seen that you also did songs with Immortal Technique, very underrated MC in my ad. And how did that collab Shout out to Peru. About? Yo, Immortal Technique. Yeah, Peru, that's right. Um, Well, interestingly, I, uh, okay, so one of my good friends who was a fan first, supported my work, is a a music video director. And he's done other things too, Jason Fisher. Mm -hmm. And Jason, I guess Jason must have shot a video for tech or uh, did something where they knew each other. And we were at Bowery, Bowery Poetry Club, which is like this place in downtown Manhattan that also would do live hip hop. And he's like, yo, there's a mortal technique. I need to introduce you to him. He will love your work. Right. And I was like, OK, cool. That's great. Let's do it. So Jason <laughs> brings me over in the middle of the crowd like. The immortal technique. Hey, tech, this is Maya Azucena. And like, yo, he had such a sour face, you know, like, and he looked at me like, yeah, like he barely even looked at me and was like, yeah, like, I don't even know if he said nice to me too. He was just like, kind of like, just maybe like, yeah, <laughs> like that, you know? And I was like, I felt kind of bad. I was like, man, he didn't even like give me eye contact, nothing. And then, like, I feel like, you know, in my, in the reality show version, you know, in two weeks later, he called me. Immortal Technique called me. Yeah, this is Immortal Technique. I'm like, hey, hello. <laughs> he was like, yeah, uh, can I ask you to be, like, a guest on my project? <laughs> and uh, I came in, and, and I did uh, Crimes of the Heart, which <clears throat> I came in and recorded it. Southpaw was the music producer at the time. And I remember having a cold. I had a cold while I was singing. So I was like, damn, my voice probably sounds really, you know, like edgy right now. And like, I didn't hear anything. They didn't send me any demos, nothing to listen to until it came out. And I was like, it's fire. I love it. I love it. (laughs) So Immortal Technique. And he's cool people, man. He just doesn't trust you know, he's not very open in public because, you know, he's been through life and he's probably right. Don't trust people. But he's very warm, actually, and cool and down to earth. Um, but he's not going to show it to you, like, if he doesn't know you. <laughs> quick quick history, because there's all, when you were concerned about your voice, Maya, on that track, there was also a, one of the all-time great songs in the history of pop rock music. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Anne and Nancy Wilson, the sisters that founded Heart, correct? Oh, yeah, the rock group Heart. Yes. On Steve Dream, mm-hmm. I believe it was uh, Nancy that actually sang on lead on that, and Nancy had a cold. And they were, you know, she was concerned about the raspy and the congestion on the record. But they loved it so much. The label was asked, "Can't you get sick again?" <laughs> All right, <laughs> you never know, man. Like you just got that vibe, you know, it's something. Actually, yeah. you know, sometimes w- when you're singing with a cold, it's like giving a sense of like urgency, like you know, like I've been through some stuff, you know, and like I'm pushing through it, and like it kind of comes through with that, you know. 
Yeah. Um, and what you said about uh, immortal techniques, shout out, you know, to Felipe Colonel, you know, um, founder of Viper Records, which is his label. Um, of course, that was the Third World album, I believe, released in 2008 that you're referring to that you did the track for. Um, Keck is a... And he also serious. did a song on my... I had a mix... I did a mix tape or, like, mix CD, and he did a song mm-hmm. with me uh, on my uh, project called Rebel. And so um, him and shout out to Hassan Salam, who is, you know, in his general um, camp of MCs, uh, like Poison Pen and like that kind of set. Um, and Hassan Salam is one of my favorite MCs uh, also. And Hassan Salam and Immortal Technique were guests on my um, on that uh, my song Rebel. Yeah, because matter of fact, because um, Tech also uh, had a um, over over um, I can't remember what country it was, but I know he actually has the. Um, foundation uh, that was helping um, disadvantaged children. I cannot remember which country it was. Source Magazine did a story on that some years ago. Um, I'd have to dig through to find out which one it was. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and, and Maya, this is not even, this is just hip-hop. We're, we're not even getting into everything. I mean, you said Leon Ware. And Leon Ware, oh, Leon. in terms of who you work with, he architect. He was the architect of my favorite Marvin Gaye album, I Want You. Um, people say Midnight Love was Marvin's best album. I'm like, it was great. That was his probably, it's arguably his most famous album. To me, I Want You was the most complete album. Matter of fact, the the legend behind it was that Marvin recorded that whole record late, basically lying down on a couch. Um, and wow. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was first introduced to After the Dance. Shout out to the Hughes brothers, Albert and Allen, because they had the instrumental of After the Dance closing out their documentary that they released in 1999, American Pimp. I have that. I have the soundtrack, uh, and I have the, you know, documentary on VHS. Um, and I mean, and I have I Want You on cassette. That that is like, oh my God. Um, wow. Maya, tell us how. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, tell us, so Leon tell Ware, us how that so Leon, Leon Ware, for anybody that's not, you know, like you filled them in a little bit, but not only did, you know, the architect of I Want You, Leon Ware, actually I Want You was Leon Ware's album. Those are all his songs. And when he met Marvin Gaye, Marvin was like, yo, like I want them. <laughs> so like Leon hmm. Ware agreed to basically give all of his songs from his album to Marvin Gaye. Um, and this is what he told me. I'm not just picking story? it up. <laughs> this is Le- like if you were around Leon. Leon's an ancestor now, but he he would have told you all. He's happy. He was happy to share, you know. But not 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 with any disrespect. He totally good relationship with Marvin right, Gaye. But right, that's right. what it was. I met right. Leon in L.A. So as an indie artist, I was like co-producing my own tours and um or I had made my way out to California I was doing a little tour with my New York musicians and I played at a spot in uh in Los Angeles that Leon happened to be on the bill Leon I was going on before Leon Ware and he performed and he approached me after him and his wife Carol we really loved you we exchanged information and we also immediately had kind of like a family feeling like of a connection. And they contacted me and Leon, you know, was like, I'm coming to New York. You know, I noticed that you have a show at SOBs. Uh, You know, would you like to do a duet together? And the first song we sang together as a duet in front of my audience was I want you. And the audience was blown away. It was so cool. And then after that, Leon and I just, he invited me on tour with him. I, I kind of sang all the female parts of his whole repertoire. You know, he wrote Inside My Love by Minnie Ripperton. 
Uh, mm-hmm. He wrote, mm-hmm. uh, "I want to, I want to be where you are for the for Michael Jackson." I mean, he his his catalog is incredible. So I sang yeah, all the female is. parts. It is. And, and and we did shows around you know several different cities, and uh, we even started writing music together. And um, you know, so Leon is con- I consider him like family, and such an honor to get his blessing, you know, over me. Like there's this feeling of the sensation of when the greats, you know, recognize. And when I have an opportunity to meet a great and then have them recognize my talent, it feels like a passing of the baton and a, and a sense of like, you know, you're one of us. And that feeling is amazing. And I had that same feeling when I worked with Stephen Marley. Um, so tell me when I can share that. <laughs> you can share it now because you're being modest because this is like the 96 Bulls. You're a two-time Grammy winner. So we, we need to discuss that because, yes, <laughs> yes, because he won a Grammy for that album of which you were on. So we, we need to talk about that because we want to make sure we are acknowledging all of your achievements. Damn it, this has been a year in the making. We're not missing nothing. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, thank you. That's so dope. Um, so, all right, this is – One thing that I think marks my career is this international mindset. I, becoming an independent artist, I started thinking about all my philosophies. And one of them is this, that the world is my market. New York City, Brooklyn, you know, obviously is not the only city in the world, even though I love it. It should be. No, just kidding. (laughs) Um, That's that Brooklyn that you are like. Yeah, that's how we Brooklynites are, obnoxious. But but I mean, like, there's a, there's a whole world out there. And when you think of it like that, then you stop limiting yourself to the immediate contact that you have. And so because of this, I started really opening myself up to all these international collaborations. And this is all going to lead back to Stephen Marley, by, by the way. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, go ahead. We uh, got time. Go ahead. <laughs> so... Uh, um, a music engineer that is, became a friend um, d- introduced. I was introduced to DJ Jad. Jad J A D is a hip hop artist, old school hip hop artist from Italy, from Rome. He is one of the original hip hop artists in Italy, and he produced his own solo stuff. And he was making this album called Milano, New York, and. I was invited by Alberto Polo, who is also, uh, he's from Napoli, Naples, and uh, he's one of the original hip-hop artists also from Italy, and he was helping DJ Jad to mine for artists that would be good for his project. So I was invited, and because I clicked with Jad, I ended up writing, four, co-writing four songs on his album, and one of the songs that I did is a duet with Buckshot. Again, boot camp click. So Buckshot had a song called What's Good, and I was doing the chorus. Bonsai, I'm going to go back to the top, Bonsai, the music engineer, happened to be the main engineer and mixer for the Marleys at that time. I didn't know that. I'm just doing my thing, being an artist. Well, I didn't know that Stephen Marley was looking for a singer to do Let Her Dance on his album, his first solo album, Mind Control. He was looking for Mm -hmm. a female singer, and uh, apparently he had tried two other singers and it didn't work out. And he was, it was the last song to be recorded on the album. And Bonsai said, hey, listen, Steve, uh, I met this singer. She's great. You should hear her voice. And he played Stephen Marley the song What's Good with Buckshot, which I had this kind of approach, kind of like a, you know, the, you know how the opening song on all the um, James Bond movies, they're kind of like yeah. sexy, mid tempo, slow, like, you know, drippy. Like my voice was, I was singing like that. And Stephen liked that style and he wanted that for Let Her Dance. 
And they invited me. And he flew me down to Miami or Coconut Grove, where their studio is, is the U.S. studio. And there was all this tension in the room because two other females have failed at this. <laughs> and when I came in, I was like, I wanted to put all my flavor on it. I was like, oh, I can do this and I can add O's. And then they were like, and everybody was so tense, like, like just, just, just only do exactly, you know, like they were scared of him basically. And I, I was like, okay, I have lessons to learn. And I, I just recorded it with my heart, you know. And Stephen came in the room after I recorded it and sat in the chair in front of the control panel. And he had his head down while they were playing it. And then, like, halfway through, he, like, put his lighter in the air. <laughs> Everybody, you could feel all the tension in the room go away. And he put his head up and he smiled and he's like, okay, uh, you know, and basically like let her do what she wants to do on this track and like left the room and I added all these O's, I added all these ideas, the call and responses and everything that ended up on the, on the let her dance record. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I mean, okay. Obviously this is ginormous because you're, this is the son of the of the of the late legend Bob Marley, who has become, you know, shout out to Damien, you know, Stephen, you know, Ziggy, you know, the whole family. I mean, you know, of course Rita, you know, my mom <clears throat> Rita, you know, uh, it, it, it's it. I mean, it came out. It, it was magic. Um, when you all got the notification of the Grammy nomination, which would ultimately culminate in a Grammy win. What was that like? Because this is one of two that you've got, and we're going to get to the other one. Um, but what was that like when you when, when you all got the wire for that? Well, what was interesting is that because I'm like, I'm still like one day, you know, it's going to be important to me to – have it you know the attention around the projects that you know like in my own name and the things like that so I was on tour I was in Croatia I was in a whole nother country and I was performing with um, this mega artist from former Yugoslavia who's a rock artist imagine like Bruce Springsteen slash Sting or something like he's like huge in this country and I was performing with Cro- in Croatia with Giboni, and I was getting these text messages like, congratulations, congratulations. And I was like, for what? And they were like, for the Grammy? Steven just won Best Album of the Year, Best Reggae Album of the Year. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. Wow, cool, you know? And I don't know. I was just sort of like, you know, a little bit, well, one, really proud to be a part of it, and then to um, not sure how much I should celebrate because I'm, I'm one of, you know, many people that made that album possible. So it's more like I pay respects to Stephen for his success and I'm honored to be a part of it. I'm part of it, the win, but I'm not, you know, the only reason for it. So I just felt like thankful. Damn it, woman, you're too modest. Because the fact is, like I said, it's a championship effort and everybody contributed to it because whoever listened to it and whoever felt the record should be nominated, your voice was among the many that made it magnanimous. So, yes, you are a winner in that aspect of it. Man on the scene to the last man on the scene. For the first woman on the scene to the last woman on the scene. Everybody contributed to a team victory. So, yes, you share in that success. Because also, too, with Jaboni, you know, uh, you were on his album in 2006, Unca Fibre, which also won two Croatian Grammys. You know, so... So, they have their... So, in Croatia, they have their top um, music award. Um, It's called P-O-R-I-N. Porin. Porin. Yes. Uh, not porn, not to be confused with porn. <laughs> <laughs> I am not well known, do not have any awards in the porn industry. Porn. And um, 
So, uh, you know, I was invited, <laughs> pouring as in pouring my soul into it. Exactly. And uh, the first collaboration I did with Jiboni um, was, uh, you know, I recorded it in Brooklyn and sent the vocals to him overseas. And that first song won uh, Best Duet of the Year and also Best Album of the Year um, for, for their top music awards. And before you know it, I was invited to be on their national award show, you know, not speaking Croatian at all. And I'm up there singing this song and <laughs> wearing a silver dress. And, you know, I, I, I just, I've had an amazing journey. And, that, you know, that's not even the most current. I have to ask you something, guys. I Sure. I have an obligation that I cannot um I can't cancel that's starting in about five minutes and I hate the feeling that I needed to rush anything talking to you guys. But no, because what should we do about that? This. We're gonna have a part can two. We, that's can we can we do the do. part two like next week or something? Can we like plan it like ASAP? Because I feel like the heat is on. Like I, I don't wanna lose our energy. King, Absolutely. King's gonna we'll make definitely it work something out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Not, especially yeah. now that we know how to get the, not, especially now that we know how we could get you on and the procedure. Right, because we've been so able to coordinate the time that. zones and all that. So, yeah, we can do that. We can do that because we got, part two is going to be phenomenal because we, there's still so much we haven't talked about that we're going to be like, yeah. Exactly, and I'll be. promise, I promise you this, when I return, I will absolutely not have anything on, on the back end of our talk so that we can you know, breathe and relax and, and just be in the moment. Um, I, I, I didn't anticipate how, you know, cool we would be just so comfortable. Like, and, uh, I can't believe that was an hour. That's crazy. Yeah. It goes by quick. Well, well you have a good time. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, cause I, yeah, because you, I know, I know, um, cause you posted about on your page, my, about you doing your, uh, live, your IG live. So yeah. Um, so obviously, yeah, we don't want to hold you off on that Maya. You know, we got a part two that's going to be phenomenal when you come back. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to get that worked out right after we get off the phone with this, me and King, we're going to go into our mad scientist mode to, to coordinate the next day. And we're, we're definitely going to shoot it, shoot it to you and let you know, when it is, so we're ready. Um, I'm, fact, we're I'm ready to. Plot. I, I want to plotting. Go ahead. Oh so, yeah, we're we're plotting right now. Even as we're talking, we're plotting. <laughs> okay, so let me say a couple of things. Let me say a couple of things. First of all, I really want to thank you, T Mac, and King Eric for inviting me. Um, I feel the support. I felt the support leading up to this. So I, it, it's really a pleasure to be invited as a guest on your show. And I want to thank your listeners for getting to know me. Uh, again, this is Maya Azucena from Brooklyn, New York, international recording artist, crazy person. <laughs> and, and we love I'm all only of it. running for all of it. Me too. I love it. I love y'all. And I'm only running because as I'm this indie artist hustle, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to complete my I Am Enough album, which is the newest full project that will come out real soon. And I'm launching it off the ground, and I'm doing a special engagement with my uh, fans on Instagram at right now. So that's, that's my focus. But we're going to talk about it in more detail when I come back for our part two. Absolutely. Um, so get that exciting, exclusive engagement on with everybody. Uh, Maya, we love you so much. Thank you again. We can't wait to have you back. Um, and God bless, baby. You know, just keep doing it. And we're going to be supporting you all the yeah, way. Keep doing uh, your thing. Send us that music. God when bless you're done you. With it we, yeah. Send us that music when you're done so we can push it on the show. I, I will actually before our next um, talk, I'll send you the single, and so you can have it in advance of its release. 
and you can share it with your audience. Okay. So right before okay. our next one, I'll send it to you so you can share it. Um, it's not out yet, but we can share it just for your audience. Absolutely, baby. Thank you again. Thank cool. you again. And um, oh, much love. I really am. I, I apologize for running, but I I promise okay. when we come it's back okay. in, yeah, we're gonna be good. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna be rushing off. Okay. And I thank you for having me. And yeah, as soon as we get offline, let me know the dates that that can work on your side. Absolutely. Definitely. I'm gonna definitely hit you today. All right. Peace, y'all. Have a good rest of the program. And, again, Maya Azucena signing off. Much love and big upset off the cuff. Yeah. You too. Yeah. Well, okay. you know. Peace, y'all. Peace. Bye. Bye.